Hello everybody, it's Assistant Mad Haven here today, and I want to bring to you the AMX M449. A tier 8 French heavy. Tier 8. That, well, is kind of a beast. And I mean that in a really, really good way. So, let's go ahead and uh, dive right into this. Starting off today, I had a play session that essentially lasted all day long. I've played 43 different tanks, and as you guys can see near the end of my day, I was having a lot of really good matches. But there's one tank I put quite a bit of time in to get my third mark of excellence, the MXM449. I maintained 5,853 WNA inside the tank throughout the 26 battles that I played inside of it, along with a 57.69% win rate. Nice. But enough about that. What about the tank? Well. We all know how Wargaming works, and their website's not loading, um, so I can't exactly go back to the original buffs that we got on the tank to be able to show those off, because it's not loading. I don't think it ever loads, though. Like, it, it stopped a couple weeks ago, and just, it's never come back for me. I, I think they locked me out. I think they locked everyone out. I don't think they want people to go back and be like, you did this wrong. You did this wrong. So I'm going to start bookmarking stuff, and taking more screenshots, and... By buying another hard drive to store all the screenshots, because it's a lot of freaking screenshots. God. Okay, well, let's go ahead and jump into the new armor here. So, PC. We got 100 and... Well, we got 60 millimeters in the hatch. We got 55 millimeters in the side. Thing is, console, we have 80 millimeter sides now, and our hatch is 150. So, in the center point, we're looking at 150. As we come out, we're looking at about 160 in here... About 190, 200 auto ricochet, impinable. The top part is still 40 millimeters thick, making it impinable. And to give you guys an idea of what we're using against this right now, it's actually the 130 from the Skoda T56. So this is a big boy gun that's 130. They can overmatch 40 millimeter plates. The thing is, what I really like about the AMX M449 is the fact that your armor on top is 45 millimeters. So you got 60 millimeters on top of the um, forehead of the tank, and then one thing that, you know, not a lot of people really think about is using gun depression. The under armor of the tank is also 45 millimeters thick, which means you can play really aggressive against a lot of people and still maintain auto ricochet underneath the tracks into the top armor of the tracks. This is beneficial because there's a lot of tanks in the game that this armor is 20 or it's 30. Uh, the best example that I could probably give would actually be comparing it to, let's say, no, uh, tier 10. Let's say tier 10. Let's drop the 8s. Let's remove 8. Is it removed? It is removed. Okay. Now let's go Czechoslovakian. Check the VZ55. 3D model. Even a tier 10 that suffers from this. 30 millimeters of armor underneath, which can be overmatched if you're shooting into the tracks as he's using his gun depression to come over and peek you. Plus, it's a perma track and damage guaranteed. Jagdpanzer E100 suffers from this. The E100, uh, a lot of heavy duty German armor does suffer from having 40 millimeters to 30 millimeters in the spot as well. But for the M449, it's 45. Giving the tank a massive advantage. And sure, you know, you got a lower plate, but it's 120 millimeters effective. Underneath the tank, you even got 45 underneath, which means you can come over a hill hardcore, and the only one they're going to be able to get damage is shooting you inside the lower plate directly. Now, if the tank's traveling on flat onto you, which, uh, fast refresh, and, uh, we still have the Skoda gun, we're going to load in the premium. It's flat on. You can see that the entire front of the tank is weak. Your goal is to use your 10 degrees of gun depression to be able to get a work on the enemy. Angle it, coming around corners, get super effective armor in the range of 300 to 400 millimeters of effective armor coming around a corner to bait shots into it. And then also maintaining your turret and always keeping that nice, good, sweet spot angle. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the stats here. The gun, we're looking at 232 on standards, 263 in premium, and 50 millimeters of penetration on your high explosive. For the damage, you're looking at 300, 300, and for your high explosive, 400. Hit points, we got 1,500. Uh, detectability. I like how they include the fact that they have still concealment now and moving, which is nice because I've been telling people for months that yes, heavy tanks do benefit from still concealment. It's just a very small percentage amount. Uh, view range at 370, so sacrificing on optics, optics on this is a no-go. 
40 top speed, which makes this thing really aggressive getting into the positions that it wants to. 15 reverse speed, which isn't much of a problem because of the armor. Not to mention 15 is a decent speed to be able to go in reverse. You have a 100 millimeter. Six rounds per minute. Module damage 135 or 100 millimeter. Uh, damage per minute 1800, and we can bump that up by uh, putting on advanced reload, rapid loading. Penetration at 500 meters. Max ammo speed 1000. Uh, for your standards, for your premium, 1,250, and for your high explosives, 1,000. You have AP, APCR, and HE, 10 second reload. Speaking of which, let's come back here, let's go back to stats. That is indeed an APCR shell, nice to see it's not mislabeled. Um, aim time, 2.7 seconds. It is a bit on the low side, but for the caliber of the gun and the base accuracy at .34, you don't really feel much of a hindrance with your aim time. Born Leader will be able to handle that very well. 60 rounds of ammo for ammo capacity is a crap ton. Because you got 60 times 300. I'm not doing any math. Potential damage of 18,000. So yeah, it's yeah, it's got enough ammo to handle the job. Uh, accuracy return tur tur rotation, 1.52. Uh, depression 10 degrees, elevation 20 degrees. So it's definitely really depressed, but it can always get happy. It's got a fully rotating turret, 180, and we went way too far up. Turret armor looking at 250, and yes, all around the turret, we are definitely looking at 250. All around this big behemoth. Uh, traverse speed of the turret, 28 degrees per second. Engine power, 1,000 with a 14.29 power to weight. With that 14.29 power to weight, you're definitely able to make use of that top speed of 40. Because that's a lot of engine power behind it. Uh, fire chance, 20%. So far, the entire time that I've played the tank, I have not yet been on set on fire. And that is because the um, in the back of the tank here, it's actually, you're going to be playing a lot of the time trying to get people in the front of you more than you are going to try and let them get on your sides. So primarily, trying to work on, you know, sacrificing a fire extinguisher on this tank, you can definitely sacrifice one without much of an issue. Uh, coming back over, on the tracks, we got 25 degrees and 1.6 for soft terrain, 1.8 for medium, and 2.5 for soft. Wait, this is hard. This is medium. This is soft. We're a Muppet. So, off-road driving, I'm definitely going to recommend it for this tank, simply because you want to maintain that power to weight. But due to your terrain resistance, it's going to make a lot of problems. Off-road driving does lower that down to 1.44 on firm terrain. So off-road driving is beneficial to have on there. I actually don't know if I have off-road driving on this. I do. Okay. I had to double check that. I'm sorry. So, coming back... Whenever you're side scraping against opponents, you have a really nice angle to maintain that auto ricochet going all the way down. And then, best bet is actually just to overexpose and try to get them to peek. The thing is, I usually like to come around corners around this angle here if I'm gonna have to, if I have to side scrape to still maintain effective armor here, and then slightly angle my gun out. And then whenever I back up to pull away, I like to come in and do this against the opponents while rotating my turret slowly back towards them to face the frontal armor towards the enemy. You guys will be seeing that inside the replays. But on console, they did give this 80 millimeters of side armor, and the only tank that came to mind that's flat enough to be able to compare it is actually the IS-5. So even if you're over-angled a tad bit, you're still maintaining 220 to 230 effective armor on your AMX M449. So, alright, we got all this out of the way. Let's actually go ahead and dive into what my equipment is, what my loadout is, because I know that I've done this a couple of times and I keep on forgetting to go over this crap. But I need to. I'm a slacker, and I know it. So starting off, I take a healthy amount of standards. I take 25, along with 25 premiums and 10 high explosives. Uh, Equipment-wise, it's a really basic loadout. Um, optics, advanced loader, and improved ventilation. To me, this is perfectly fine. You don't really need to worry about anything else. Uh, coming in the here, let's go ahead and drop me, because you don't need me there. I'm, uh, got an ugly mug. We got Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Sixth Sense, Off-Road Driving, Snapshot, Situational Awareness, Track Mechanic, and Rapid Aim to increase that turret rotation, just to give us a bit more Snapshot, and that's why we're also taking Snapshot, so Rapid Aim and Snapshot, that way we get a little bit more response time, and we keep that bloom nice and tight.
So let's go ahead and dive into uh, one of the replays here. Ten minutes into our little session. Ah, I clicked the right one. That's first. So, Lakeville Standard Battle. We're up against Tier 9s. It's ideal because there's a lot of Tier 8s across the board. And this is actually the match right before the third mark. But I'm not going to be showing off the third mark match because it was subpar. It took um, 10 minutes and I did 2,800 combined. And it was just really slow because it was on highway encounter. And it was kind of just one of those fights where you're just... You throw a shot down range every once in a while to reset the cap, and your goal is just to absorb shells and reset cap. It's it's a really slow, slow, slow gameplay scene, and it's just not worth showing. So I, I played another match inside this with three marks on the tank, and uh, it was the last one I played inside of it before I swapped the crew back over to my tier 10. But one thing I can say about this, I maintained a 5,800 W and 8. Can you, can you guess what ammo I used all day long? My goal inside the AMX M449 was to avoid premium unless it was mandatory. So I went through my 25 quite a bit. Because the reload, whenever you're using everything on it, you get down to a 7.1 and whenever your premium consumable is active in the range of 6.8. So you do have a very fast fire rate with 300 alpha. And so far, I have not been able to really find any cons about the tank other than the fact that you have a hatch. The hatch is the only thing that has been playing against this tank since the time I started playing it. Along with that, we have the Cobra pushing up against us, so we just got to angle a tad bit and we ricochet. Uh, 1,760 so far. And I have worked this corner on Lakeville quite a bit, and I've gotten really good at knowing where I need to be placed on this map. And there we go, putting a shot into Conqueror. We don't pin because we aimed a little bit too high up. I actually remember uh, thinking to myself in this match that I did aim up a little bit too high. So I aim down low, we bounce again. I actually saw the shell go low. You know, but the fact is, even for a tier 8, this thing is very powerful. And even against tier 9s, they struggle to pin it. But since your armor in the front of your turret is only 250 millimeters, if they load the premium, they're going to be able to kill two of your crewmates and tear through the lower portion, bottom right, was where the shell landed there, and tear right through it to be able to kill two, your gunner and your loader. So, keep that in mind when playing this. It is heavily armored, and whenever you are top tier, you are devastating. But once you learn your armor and you take it a bit slower, then the tank starts to really stand out. Not to mention whenever you're in a little bit of a brawling scenario, mid to close range, just by rotating your turret, since your hatch is so far on the right side, your hatch actually gets relocated quite a bit, and it can drag people to actually auto-ricochet off of your hatch because of how thick it is now at 150 millimeter stick. So, the armor on this as well. Um, whenever, before the buff, because I can't remember what all the buff did for the tank, I can't remember if they increased any of the statistics on the gun, if they increased the reload or not, because I can't load the website to find out what it is, but I can say this. For 300 alpha in 7.1 seconds with a 100 millimeter, it's not 120, it's not a big gun, you're going to struggle overmatching a couple of guys, but what it offers is a faster rate of fire, decent module damage, and a overmatch on the engine deck of the VZ. That was a nice shot. I remember uh, pulling that one off and I was like, wow, that was nice. Now, there is a lot of things about the tank that it will start to suffer. Uh, whenever you're up against tier 10s, you will find yourself with that 263 millimeters of penetration starting to lack a little bit, so taking it a bit slow is kind of going to be the goal whenever it comes down to it. And then with the price tag of the tank, which I actually have no idea what the price tag is. I want to say 10,000? We were just looking at it. I, I can... I'm going to pull it back up real quick and tell you guys what the price tag is in this thing. It, oh my goodness. 14,840. Ouch. But worth every penny in my opinion. I didn't realize that. That, that is pricey. So, uh, f what is it? Next part, 
final part? No, not the final part. Definitely not the final part. 14,800, $15,000, a $50 tank. Maybe more. It's more. If you want to get your hands on this, you got to spend $65. Huh. I'm sorry. I should have looked it up prior. I'm a Muppet. And I'm okay with it. I had... I, I've put a lot of matches in today, you guys. I am... My brain's dead. It, it's nothing but tanks, 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 tanks. Um, calm, collected plays. And a lot of ricocheting. So far up to 3,400, 603 spotting with 3,508 dealt. And so far haven't dug into my premium at all. Down to my last three standard shells. Um, I kind of thought about putting on more standard shells, but for every single 10 match that I ended up in, I wanted to make sure that I had enough ammo to handle a 10 if I ran into them, rather than dealing with the subpar 232 penetration on its AP against them, which is actually in the higher end of AP rounds for tier 8s at 232, because we have a lot of tanks that are like 227 to 225 standard AP pin, so this thing has a really good AP round. The high explosives as well, they're not too bad of 50. You know, they get the job done at 400. And if you can penetrate your target with a 7 second reload, being able to drop 800 damage on somebody in a matter of 7 seconds, it is a bit scary for them. It makes them panic just a tad bit. I'm kind of happy because I was able to use a couple of high explosives throughout the day on playing the tank as well. And there we go. We are now starting to dab into our premium rounds just a tad bit. 280. We're going to raise the gun to see if we can block a shell. And also to mention, another thing that I do like about the tank is that you have a 40mm gun, so against 120mm, you can absorb their shells, but at the cost of possibly damaging your gun and even absorbing some heat rounds. But anything bigger than 120, there's a chance that they can go through your gun and still hit your hatch. Now, as a money maker, this tank is really nice. You know, 50% standard bonus for the premium, and you know what? No, it's actually a 60% silver bonus. That's even better. Let's go ahead and dive right into the second replay, which is on Dulica Pass, and we're top tier in this scenario. So, I had a lot of really high damage games inside this tank throughout the day, and the highest I managed them to get was 5,000... 800. I'll actually show you guys some of the screenshots after this match. But it, it, it was really nice. So, next thing I want to talk about. And, and this one's going to be a big one. Rebalancing the tanks. This one is one of the tanks that kind of surprised me a tad bit. With the way that it felt inside the queues. The way it felt whenever you were top tier. Um, originally, I, I thought one of the best all-round tanks was the TNH 105, and that is the Czechoslovakian Tier 8 Tech Tree. Whenever it's top tier, it is, in my opinion, one of the most devastating tier 8s in the game because the way the armor is put together, it's not as effective against 10s as it is against its own tier. So for ranked um, gameplay, I think the TNH 105 would be absolutely amazing if we ever get ranked gameplay which I really want to see ranked gameplay because inside the standard queues, there's something I can talk about. You know, getting these high damage games inside standard queues, there's a lot of different skill variety. And I think for World of Tanks to continue on and maintain a competitive atmosphere, we should introduce ranked and introduce ranked properly. Uh, by properly, I mean ma making an actual system in game to where we can actually go against people around our skill base and then using tanks inside those categories to actually test and see how good they're truly performing rather than jumping inside public queues and relying on it. Which, I mean, in public queues, this is the expectation that you could probably get from this tank. I whiffed this shell. Um, no, actually I did not. I fired. I premature fired. But it's not to diss on anybody or it's not to really belittle anyone. I just think that if we had a ranked system inside game where tier 10s one season, tier 8s one season, tier 9s, tier 7s, and then kind of keep it in the higher tier base, that would make the game a bit more competitive and make a reviewing of some tanks a lot more fun because you're going to be able to pull them outside ranked gameplay as well and give your rank standing on it at the same time as your uh, public opinion of the tank. 
I'm a little bit stoked though. I actually get to review a tank that I three marked, and because I three marked it, I felt like doing a review on it. So against tier tens, this tank does tend to suffer. It does turn into a bit of a support role, and you lose your offensive capability, and you do lose your ability to be able to jump in and handle a lot of the scenarios. And, you know, like, the one thing about this tank is the 10 degrees of gun depression. If you're utilizing your 10 degrees of gun depression and you're always coming in at a slight angle like you see me doing here, I'm hugging the wall to make it to where if they want to push around, they can't really get around me too easily. They have to come at me head on or try to push past me. And platooning up all day long, I had a friend that always had my back. He kept distance from behind me. And, um, Cinnabombs, you were fun to play with, man. And I look forward to playing with you quite a bit more. But with the Amex M4, this tank, up against tens, that, that's kind of where you start to feel this tank drag out a tad bit. Because you don't have enough armor, you don't have enough penetration to stay competitive, but you, you kind of have an idea on what you need to do. And trying to use, like, use all everything that you have to handle the tier 10s that you're going up against, getting side shots, relying on the fast reload, perma-tracking out tier 10s. This thing does ex exceptionally well. But we have a lot of new tier 8 premiums coming into the game that are all getting ending up with 280 millimeters of pin, a couple of them with 290, 288, 285, 282. There's a lot of 280s. Yet, a lot of these older tanks, we're probably not going to see them getting any love which I'm totally fine with. Personally, I think tanks that get over 280 millimeters of effective pin are a bit too high for tier eights, because the second that they're top tier, tier sevens almost stand no chance, not even haul down heavies inside the tier seven category, are gonna be able to handle what they're gonna be able to put out. Now, well, how far off subject did we just get? I think we got super far off subject, but I, I'm completely fine with it. It's an unbiased opinion, my personal opinion. If you guys agree with me, let me know down in the comments section if you guys feel the same way about that as I do. But this tank, the way that it was buffed, the way it was brought in, I kind of feel like it did not need the side armor buff. The hatch buff, I'm completely fine with, but increasing the side armor from 55 to 80 millimeters kind of made it this all-round tank that it's outperforming a lot of tanks that perform the same role, but this one's able to perform multiple roles at the same time while maintaining 40 across the ground and making some other heavies feel a bit slower and inadequate whenever it comes to the haul down fighting. Not to mention, whenever you're facing this thing frontally and it's haul down and you're, let's say, a top tier tank instead of a tier 8, there are moments I find myself in that I feel as in the only way to damage this is by hitting its hatch. Um, you don't have any overmatch points on the top armor because it's 45 millimeters. You can't go through the uh, lower part of the tracks because it's 45 millimeters. And then the hatch is really the only thing that stands out to me. So people who like to play with their hatch in mind, for instance, pulling around a wall, side scraping, keeping their hatch covered, or a couple of other things, it turns this tank into something that's really hard to dig out. And that causes a lot of problems because it means that there's really only one way to kill this thing frontally, and that's by aiming at the one giant tumor on top of the tank. And if they manage to find a way to cover that giant tumor, then you're potentially SOL. And you're going to find yourself being punished by this thing's extremely high DPM, which my DPM currently is in the range of 2,532. So I will be able to kill any tier 8 in under 40 seconds inside this tank because of that DPM, or 45 seconds. So, overall, the tank is amazing. It is performing amazing. It is maintaining so well. And I, I have ended up in a lot of one versus who knows how many. I have placed on the um, MVP score screen on the losing team. I mean, I wasn't MVP, but I was second or third place. Third place in one of them, second place in the other. I have one screenshot to show you with one of them. Uh, the other one actually went a little bit too fast and I wasn't able to grab it. And I never went back to grab it, uh, but I probably should have. Because, I mean, if you, if you end up on the scoreboard and you lost, that, that is amazing. 
but overall this tank in my opinion is definitely worth a pickup if you guys are in the market for a super heavy or essentially what feels to be a universal heavy currently in the game the amx m449 takes that role and its downfall tier 10 some tier 9s a lot of tier 9s actually now that i think about it is potentially this tank's overall downfall but whenever you are top tier and you take the matchmaker um, into consideration because the matchmaker works on a three system so you get two matches against tens and nines and your third match is guaranteed to be a decent match that's possibly top tier or against tier nines but a low majority of them not a high majority it's supposed to be a decent game so if you guys can control the way that you're playing the game and you can go after let's say you play two games inside of your higher penetration tier eights and then your third match you pull out your amx in 449 that's probably the best way to do it. That way you're guaranteed to be up against tier 9s or even top tier. Um, however, if you end up on a multiple spree of tier 8s, then the system doesn't know what to do and it resets every single time you end up as top tier. So keep that in mind if you guys are trying to uh, work with that system in mind. Right here, going to be loading a high explosive for the Shaska because he's just down the corner. So for up to uh, 2,955 damage blocked with 1,615 Assisted, and 5,000 dealt. Good snapshot with a high explosive into the uh, GW Panther Tier 7 artillery. You get a pull over and say hello, Shaska. Oh, never mind. There's the accuracy and aim time uh, for you. And that does happen quite a bit inside this tank as well. I don't know how many times it happened inside this replay, but throughout the day, it was actually really common for my shells just to outright miss. So, keep in mind, it does happen to me just like it happens to you and anyone else. So, an absolutely amazing game inside this tank. With 5,566 damage dealt, 7 kills, giving me a Devastator medal, uh, 3,475 blocked, I made 200,000 silver profit inside the tank as well. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and... I believe I show off the mark here. Yeah, 95.55. If you guys want to rewind to check out what the last rating was, the match I played immediately after actually got me the 0 0.2 that I needed. Well, the 0 0.02 that I needed to be able to um, mark the tank to, you know, get it that actual mark. And real fast, I'm going to go ahead and pull these up. And then I have a brain fart. Oh, my gosh. What am I doing? Ah, that's right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pull this one up. We're going to pull this one up. We're going to pull a brain fart. Uh, you know what? Here, I got a better idea. Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. It makes it for nine. Uh, this is one of the matches that was a loss because we got the winners over here, but I made enough base experience to put me in third place over here. I do actually do think that the next one after this is uh, going to be it, but no, it's not. Uh, this is one of them right here with 4,714 damage dealt. Uh, let's drop out of that one. Uh, here's another 5,803 damage dealt with six kills. And, uh, yeah. MVP score screen, and I lost. Um, another one, 5,654. This is throughout the day. Uh, another one, 5,518 damage dealt. And uh, that's it. Oh, no, never mind, we got 5,000, uh, 5, well, 5,566, which was actually the match you guys just watched with the 206,000, uh, made. So, yeah, I pulled that one up for no reason. So, overall, this tank, the MX M4, I think is absolutely amazing. Uh, with the most recent buff to it, it has brought it up to an entirely different level, and... I was surprised that I, I, I've been putting matches into it over the past couple of months, but I just really haven't found the drive to play it. But today, for whatever reason, I decided to put 30 matches inside the tank, just in one play session alone, and a lot of time invested into it, just today alone. I mean, I've, been, I, I've had the tank since it essentially released, and with the most recent buff to it, I believe that the Amex M449 is one of the top performers for public queues inside World of Tanks. For Tier 8s, this is one of the 
probably best silver makers for me currently um, with the armor that it has it's all round all, all round strong I there's almost no cons that I can see inside this tank except for penetration and you have cancer uh, known as a tumor on top of your head on the tank and that's about it so you guys if you enjoyed the video leave a like comment subscribe um yeah, I, I don't really know what else I can say about the um, AMX M449, except for it is a comfortable tank to play. And I seriously think I might put quite a few more matches inside this. However, I will not gold mark it. I refuse to gold mark any tank in the game because I don't agree with the fourth mark of excellence. Um, if the mark of excellence system was on the 95 lie rather than the 100% true, for those of you who understand what I'm talking about about that, thank you. I prefer the lie 95%, that way I'm not inflating damage standing, making it almost impossible for average players to be able to get their first mark of excellence or even slightly get that second. Because the skill base required now to be able to get a third mark of excellence, it's starting to get a lot higher. Especially since you have people that are jumping in the game, getting way competitive for no reason in public queues. Public queues, not ranked. And then bragging about it all the time. There's really no point to brag. I three mark a tank, and guess what? I, I got a three mark on this. Hopefully you guys take what I say inside this review and stop and go, Wow, a lot of thought was put into this, a lot of time was put into this. And my brain hurts because of how many times I've said AMX in 449 mile. Because, yeah, this thing's nice. By the way, don't get the two confused. The heavy metal hero version is definitely better. You got 8mm sandbags all around this thing, and they do absorb some shells. So if you guys plan on getting it, the heavy metal hero version is the one to go for. Which might be why it's got an increase in the price tag. Because there's no camouflage to put on the tank. Other than that, you guys, have a great day. I'm out of here. Catch you in the next one. By the way, I didn't forget about the Kronenwagen. I just had a couple of things pop up that I had to handle first, so more than likely I will try to get that one out as soon as I can, but no guarantees, I'm a slacker.